Let's talk about you a little bit. How are you feeling? Man continually strives to replace God with money and materials. Seven days are your money back. More things for more people. It kind of insulates you so that you don't feel. You just keep going all the time. And as people have constant social influence, more desires have developed to be satisfied. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter, everyone. It is so good to be gathered with you today all around the world and in our lot as we celebrate the greatest news ever that Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia, alleluia, and amen. It is good news for you and for me, and it makes the truth and the reality that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in this day because nothing can conquer us. Everything is for us because the victory of Christ is within us. And so it is so good to be gathered together today, and I want to ask you a question. I want you to, to answer this. Have you ever had a life-changing moment? Now, you're probably thinking to yourself right now, that is the silliest and dumbest question. Of course we have, because we have. But I want you to think about some of those life-changing moments that you've had in your life. And I want to share with you a few of mine. First, my wedding. That was a life changing moment. Uh, just getting married and, and, and coming back from my honeymoon and then just beginning a rhythm and routine with my wife and just realizing that nothing will be the same. That I am married now and it's not just about me any longer, but now it's about we, right? So that was one of mine. Another one was when we had kids. Uh, and I just remember still holding both of my daughters for the very first time and uh, experiencing this amount of love that has no bounds, that had no limits. And that very first second, I laid eyes on both of my girls to know that there was nothing on earth I wouldn't do for them. Uh, I remember even, too, just that life change. We were home. It was probably the first or second day of being home with our daughter, uh, Macy, for the first time. And, and she's crying at like 2 a.m. and just bawling uncontrollably. And we're, I'm looking at my wife, and she's looking at me. We're on a couch, and we're like, she's not hungry. We just fed her. Uh, her diapers are changed. She's clean. She's ready. So what's going on? And we didn't know, but I looked at my wife, and I just said, what have we done? <laughs> life change. And, and of course, right now, you and I get it. I mean, just one month ago about, our whole nation began to experience just change. Schools being canceled and brought onto home, right? All these changes in our lives and all these things that that we just look and say, our life today, all the things that we said, this, is, this would not happen, it's happening before our very own eyes. There's not a person in America that's life hasn't been changed, that's world hasn't been turned upside down. And you know, in the midst of all of this, we recognize that sometimes we can, we, we can put our hope, we can put our value, we can put our worth, we can make material things into our God. From 1 Corinthians 8, verse 5, it says, For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords. I want to share with you a joke uh, that I had heard recently. And it was about a, uh, a woman who came to her pastor. And, and she said, Pastor, my husband's dying. And he said to me I had to make him a promise 
that I would bury all of our money with him because he was the one that earned it. And I told him, Pastor, I said, if I do that, I won't have anything to live on after you're gone. And he said, I don't care. I want you to bury all of our money with me. And it was a million dollars. And the pastor said to her, he said, go home, talk to your husband. I am sure he'll change his mind. I am sure right now he's just not thinking clearly. And she went home and she talked to her husband and he was unrelenting on it. And finally he passed away. Well, she came back and as the pastor and her were at the graveside from the funeral, and it was now just left to be the pastor and this widow, he looked at her and he said, I've got to ask, what did you end up doing? She said, well, pastor, I believe that I'm supposed to be a faithful wife even unto death to my husband. So I honored and obeyed his wishes, and I buried with him a million dollars. And the pastor looked at her, and he said, well, what are you going to do now? And she said, well, I'm not sure, but I'll cross that bridge once he cashes the check. You know, we can find times that we put our worth into and our, our thoughts into all of our materialistic things, right? That our jobs are so important, that, that the world won't go on if I don't go into the office. That uh, our meals or, or how we provide or our vacations, they're the most important things that we can do because we want to have these experiences while we can that our kids and their sports programs, and, and we've got to get them to everything and anything because a child with a well-rounded life has done everything in the experience that is there. And they've not missed on one experience. You see, we find ourselves putting our, our whole life and worth into all these materialistic things and today, right here, right now, you and I know that none of these things matter. And that they can be gone in a moment's notice. You and I fully understand that old cliche that no one can bring a U-Haul with them to the cemetery. All the material things are just fleeting. They actually don't provide us any safety or security. What we've learned today is that the majesty of materialism has become the mockery of modernity. The majesty of materialism has become the mockery of modernity. We've learned that those material things don't matter, that they're there, but they're not to be treasured. They're not our worth, they're not our value, and they can go away. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6, it says this, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. What we learn today is that the account of Easter, the account of Easter is authentically essential in the daily lives of all creation. We learn what essential is now, and that is Jesus, that is Easter, that is the resurrection and the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. And that's where our essential being comes, that we know now essentially what matters day in and day out. We know who gives us value day in and day out. We know where our treasure is to be stored and to be found day in and day out. And we know no matter what happens, who cannot and will not be taken away from us. Jesus. 
our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus. I was listening recently to Timothy Keller, a pastor out of New York. And he was sharing how in New York right now, there's not a person who doesn't know someone who's died from coronavirus. Think about the magnitude of that statement for a minute. That in all of New York, there's not a person who doesn't know someone who's died. Death is all around them. Death is all around us. I was just hearing about a, a, a sister church in New York that that pastor has already buried 12 people from their congregation. 12. Right now, we live a lot like those of the Easter times we're living as well. Surrounded by death and surrounded by fear. Fear of what is. Fear of what will come. Fear of the uncertainty of what tomorrow may bring. The disciples were living in that fear right now. Hidden away in upper rooms until they were to hear the Easter story, the Easter reality. And I think they were asking the same questions that you and I might be asking today. And that's the question is, where is God in all of this? Where is God right here and right now? And, and, is God even here? Why is he even allowing this? Those are normal questions, natural questions, questions that we should ask. But here's the thing. When we ask those questions, that puts God at the cause of this. Either he's a God aloof who is just standing by but just kind of doesn't care, or he's a God that has no power or abilities or controls. But here's the truth for you and for me right here, right now, and today. That in all the atrocities, in all the problems, in everything that we see in human history, it is always caused not by God, because God is good, but it has been caused by man, human beings. And even coronavirus was caused by man. So I want to ask the question of this. What if God is actually in the middle of all this? What if God is in the middle of our everyday lives? What if God is in the middle of our hurts and our heartaches and our pains? What if God's in the middle of this? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. There is one me God, one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. And so if God is in the middle of all this, here's the good news for you and for me, that God has a plan in the middle of all this. God has a plan for us. God has a plan for us through COVID-19. God has a plan for us through whatever human atrocities and hurts and heartaches and pains. God has a plan for the the downtrodden and the pits and the hurts and the pains in our houses and in our homes. That God is always in the midst of it because God has a plan and here is God's plan. And this is what the empty tomb tells us about God's plan. That God's plan is that death is not our destiny. Death is not our destiny. Rather, eternal life envelops us in the extravagant love and victory of Jesus Christ for you and for me. Amen. 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 Because because we know that God's plan is victory, victory over all things, victory over coronavirus, victory over pain, victory over suffering, victory over the tomb. And it is yours 
right here, right now, it is yours. Because today, right here, right now, we know that Jesus is not another dead God. He is the only living Lord. Jesus is the only living Lord over our lives. And when we know Jesus as the living Lord and Savior, we know that his victory reigns. I'm reminded of the story that I just heard from a pastor, Pastor Tony Evans, whose wife was dying of cancer. Now, Pastor Evans, his whole ministry is about healing ministry. And so when people were asking him and saying, but are you going to be able to heal by the power of the Spirit your wife? He said this, I'm praying she'll be healed and she'll be healed. I'm praying she'll be cared for and she'll be cared for. I'm praying she will be taken care of and she will be taken care of because she is loved and she is loved. And what that means is that he knew that no matter what the day would come, that his wife would have the victory in Jesus Christ. Because the victory is his, and so healing is ours, cared for is ours, and triumph is ours over all things in Jesus. Because here's what the empty tomb means. That the empty tomb means that eternity is envisioned for you. The empty tomb means that eternity is envisioned for you. Now, I've asked everyone today and in the cars and at your homes, many of our people have made resurrection roles. And I want you kids and I want you families right now to get out those resurrection roles. And I want you to take a bite into them. They're empty. And it's sweet and it's yummy and it's good. And here's what the empty tomb means for you. That because the tomb is empty, heaven is full. And it is filled with you and me. And it is filled with all the company of heaven. And the incountable multitudes of all nations will inherit the kingdom of God. It is ours. And that is the good news. And that means that you and I today live transformed lives by the love of Jesus Christ. To share his love with the whole world. To go and to know that nothing can entangle us. Nothing can hold us because we have been set free in the power and in the love of Jesus Christ. His victory is yours today, tomorrow, and forever. Because Jesus, Jesus is unlike any other, as Matthew 28, 6 says. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Promise fulfilled, sealed, is done, and it is yours, and it is mine. And so today, we shout and we share the good news that only Christ can give. That he is risen. He is risen indeed. So for you in your homes, what I want you to do right now, I want you to open up your windows. It's going to get cold in your house. But I want you to open up your windows and open up your doors. And I want you and your kids to run out there. And I want you to shout, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And for you in your cars, I want you to start honking right now. Let the trumpets shout from your cars for the earth to hear the victory crown of Christ. I love that we have just broken the eardrums of Satan because Christ's victory is ours today, tomorrow, and forever. Now, for those of you hearing this today, where the Spirit of God has moved within you and is, is coming to strengthen your faith, to encourage you 
into living more for Jesus by the transformation that has happened. Or maybe today you have said, I wasn't a believer, but now I want to know more. I'm ready to live and to know Jesus as he lives and he loves me. We have people standing by right now to pray with you. I want you to call that number on your screens and know that there are people ready to pray a prayer of faith over you. And if you're at home, you can click that live prayer, and we have prayer hosts ready to pray for you as well. And so you pray that number, four zero, or you call that number, 402-333-6464, and our prayer warriors are standing by to pray over you a prayer of faith. And all of God's people said, amen.